Team Valor all the way, bitches. Anyways, what's up, YouTube? Charismatic Enigma Warren 20 here, and today I'm gonna bring you guys my newest Mermel updated deck profile for the uh, July 2016 format. Uh, we just had our nationals, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and congratulations to the guy Eric uh, who won with Domain Monarchs. Uh, but I'll be running Mermels until Invasion of Venom arrives. Uh, the deck is still pretty good. It's an underrepresented deck right now, but like I still feel like this deck still can contend with the top tier decks like PK Fire, uh, Domain Monarchs, EDM, uh, Cosmos and stuff, but this is so underrepresented, but yeah, until Invasion of Venom, this is the deck I'll still be running. So yeah, anyways guys, let's move on to the deck profile and I'll explain some of my choices and some of the cards I'll be running for the event, um, for the new event, for the next event that I'll be going to probably like at my locals, which is going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! Day this Saturday. So yeah, anyways, moving on to the deck profile. So of course we play the one Mermel Abyss Lee. You play him because he's a 2700 beat stick, and plus there is also the uh, three card hand loop that I showed in my team video. So yeah, you play uh, double Abyss Lead, double Megalo. Uh, you don't need really need to play three Megalos. Three Megalos, of course, is very indeed powerful. But the thing about this deck is that this thing tends to usually clog sometimes, and is also searchable. Plus, you also play Mermel Abyss Gun, so it's also recurgible, so playing Dew is pretty ad adequate in my opinion. I like playing two. I never really needed the, uh, the third one. If I did, like, I always side it out game two and three. Uh, triple Teus, you know, the standard cards. And then for your grinding cards, uh, one Lind, one Pike, one Turge, and one Gun. So that's it for the Mermels. Uh, obviously, we play the one Lind because it helps uh, get into your Mermels a lot quicker. It helps uh, gr helps you grind game with the current matchups like PK Fire, Burning Abyss, and Cosmos and stuff like that. So Lind is pretty good in this deck. I also play Abyss Sphere, so it's pretty good. And of course, we play the Pike Turge because Pike Turge combos are really good. And uh, it also helps into instant accesses, instant access to uh, rank fours. Uh, so we got the uh, one Diva. We obviously play the Diva. And we got the triple Nephibus, pretty standard, triple Nephibus, absolutely broken. Your Majesty has arrived, Poseidon right here, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, we got double Dragoons, double Marksmen, and double Infantry. You know, this is no longer a pen heavy pendulum based format anymore, so you don't really need the triple Infantry. Double Infantry is pretty fine. I saw this one deck profile where this guy played no Marksmen in the deck. Uh, and I kind of understand why, because this format is not really heavily reliant on back row back row that much but the thing is Klee Demise and uh, Counter Fairies is such a bitch and plus Atlanteans are um, plus ones so you kind of do want to uh, utilize the plus ones Marksmans well they simplify the Marksmans and the Infantries they simplify the game state which basically helps out with your OTKs a lot uh, a lot most of the time so double Infantry and double Marksman is pretty good so that's why I always play it I never found the need to cut Marksman or Infantry at all the Atlanteans really help out a lot in this deck uh, one Moon Glacia, obviously pretty good, rips two cards out of your hand, but it's an easy saddle against PK Fire. Uh, one Aqua Spirit, this basically is my free uh, special summon from the loss of the Norden in the extra deck. So I decided to play the one Aqua Spirit, and it's actually testing out perfectly fine, I actually really like this card a lot. Plus, it's also good for graveyard manipulations for Moon Glacia play, so Aqua Spirit is pretty, pretty good. So, yeah. For the Hand Traps, we play Triple Max C and Triple... Gamma Seals. Uh, Gamma Seals, obviously, this helps out in the uh, Cosmo matchup, so it helps simplify the game state for you to help OTKs uh, a lot quicker. Max C is obviously really good in this format because everything, a lot a lot of the day, special summons like PK Fire or Pure Burning Abyss. I hear Yang Zing's got the new Trap card and Invasion of Venom, and I hear that's going to be pretty good too. This is also pretty good against Blue Eyes too. It helps you get like plus ones or plus twos and stuff. So Max C is pretty good in the main deck. So yeah, Max C is. So that's it for the monsters. Uh, the spells, we play double instant fusion. Uh, we play only one Norton. I didn't feel the necessity to play three. Uh, mo majority of times, like if I do play three, it always it's dead sometimes. So double instant fusion is fine with me. Uh, double Murray of Greed. Now, I've been testing a lot with this card. And personally, I don't really like this card because this overall is a break even card. Mermels inherently are always plus one, is a plus one, is a combo based deck, so they always rely on plus ones. But the thing is, Moray of Greed helps simplify your hands because there are times where you brick your hands. And the thing with the majority of decks nowadays, like Monarchs and Cosmos, the reason why they're so powerful is because they have spell cards that help uh, make their hands stronger with their Pantheisms and their Cosmos. And Mermels need that type of uh, power too, so I felt Moray of Greed was pretty good. There are times in games where I actually drew 
uh, like dead Gamma Seals and dead Atlanteans and I just shuffled them back and I got like Atlantean Princes and uh, discarding outlets for my Megalos. So it was pretty good. Murray of Greed's really adequate. I really like this card a lot. So double Murray of Greed. Uh, double Twin Twisters, you gotta play this correctly against Cosmos sometimes, but it's still pretty good to get rid of back row, so that way you can OTK. And it's also pretty good against Cletomize and uh, Counter Fairies. Uh, the 1 up start, 39 cards, uh, 1 Regeki, 1 Uno per Uno, uh, 1 Abyss Scale of Mizuchi, 1 Abyss Scale of Cestus, and 1 Abyss Sphere for the trap uh, that we play for Lind and other stuff. So yeah, that's it for the main deck, it's uh, 40 cards of course. Now moving on to the extra deck. So we, of course we got the one Time Wizard right here, you know what I'm saying? Time Wizard, pretty go good. Uh, for the Fusion, we play the one Norden, obviously, because you run Instant Fusion, target is Norden. I don't play uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, I felt Thousand Eyes Restrict was a little lackluster because nowadays in this format, no one really, nowadays in this format, everything can't be targeted. So Thousand Eyes Restrict isn't really that good. So I just decided to play the one Norden. Norden's pretty f uh, fine with me. Uh, we got double Abyss Dweller, pretty good in this deck. One Emerald help recycle all your resources whenever you're in a late situational game. Uh, Castell, blow shit away. Uh, got Utopia and Utopia the Lightning. You know, these co the combo cards right here. This helps get over those big beat sticks like Dark Planet and shit. Uh, one number 37. This card's absolutely broken in combination with your um, Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon uh, when it comes to the Cosmo matchup. Uh, one Draco Sack, obviously, because we play the four card hand loop. And one Neptune himself, uh, Mermel Abyss So that's it for the Exceeds. Uh, for the Synchros, we play one Tatsunoko, uh, one Herald. This helps create one of those like soft locks against like PK Fire slash Burning Abyss. So Herald's pretty good. One Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, because I don't want my fucking Cosmo opponents to float during the damage step. So Meteor Burst is pretty good. One Trishula, because I like banishing all of your shit. And one Leo Keeper of the Sacred Trees, because he keeps them trees sacred, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. So anyways, that's about it for my Mermel deck profile for the uh, July 2016 format. Hope that you guys like the video and subscribe. And also, I'll be getting some boxes hopefully soon of the next movie pack, uh, The Dark Side of Dimensions. It's kind of funny, like we get the movie pack before we actually get a chance to see the movie. But yeah, and that's Konami's logic, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that, they're a business right there. I'm not going to say much about that shit. But yeah, anyways, YouTube, that's about it for my deck profile. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, that's it.